So, uh, hello, Dr. Davidson, you are Chief Scientific Officer and co-founder of Rejuvenate Bio. So welcome to Modern Health Span, and thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Having so, me. <laughs> yeah, you, you're welcome. So, Dr. Davidson, so you started kind of in the church lab, and then Rejuvenate Bio was a spin out from there. So can you talk a little bit about what you were doing at the church lab and how that led to the founding of Rejuvenate Bio? Yeah, um, I joined George's lab uh, back in 2012 timeframe, and uh, I got my dog Bear about six months into my postdoc, and I wanted to make him live longer and healthier as soon as I got him. And so I had already started working on developing ideas to reverse aging, but really refocused on what I can do in the near term when I got Bear. And that's how I kind of stumbled on this idea to use gene therapy to re-regulate gene expression for the most part. Right. Uh, so for Rejuvenate Bio, could you talk, what is kind of the mission of Rejuvenate Bio? Yeah, our stated mission is to reverse aging and increase the quality and health span of everyone. And so we want to eliminate all age-related diseases and uh, make everyone have a healthier life with disease-free years that are quality where they can um, uh, enjoy their time. Uh, interesting. Yeah, no, that, that sounds a, a very good cause. So you, you, you've used the term reverse aging. So I, I guess, what does reverse aging mean to you? What, what do you think is the underlying driver of aging? Yeah. Aging comes from a global dysregulation of gene expression. I think there's a lot of evidence out there that suggests that uh, our DNA is just fine, except the control of that DNA over time becomes dysregulated. And uh, the global dysregulation of those genes and gene networks across uh, cells, tissues, and organs creates these different age-related diseases that certain people are predisposed to based on which gene networks become dysregulated first. And so if we can re-regulate those gene networks back to a healthier profile um, using epigenetic modification as our main tool to control which genes are on and off and how much they're on and off, um, back to when you're 25 or disease-free previously, then we'll be able to reverse an old state to a young state. And most importantly, that means reverse a disease state where you might have heart failure, kidney failure, diabetes, or obesity, and turn it back into a healthy state where you are disease-free. And so while you were at the church lab, you did a paper, it was 2019, um, reversing the age of mice using th uh, three factors, I think, which reduced, which, which reversed um, four, uh, four of these chronic diseases. So can you talk a little bit about that paper and what were the factors that you used to kind of produce this reversal? Yeah, the idea for that paper is that we were able to reverse four different disease states, heart failure, kidney failure, diabetes, and obesity with a single combination of two genes. We explored three different genes in that paper, FGF21, alpha clotho, and um, TGF beta receptor 2, uh, which was solubilized in order to decrease TGF beta 1. So, what you see over time is that as you get older, FGF 21 decreases, alpha clotho decreases, and TGF beta 1 increases. And these three factors are systemically expressed and secreted factors that um, go globally in your system. And these three genes were very attractive to re-regulate from a gene therapy perspective because you wouldn't have to get into every single cell to get an effect in every single cell. You could create a protein factory in the liver or muscle. Uh, in our case, we're aiming to do that in the liver uh, to express and secrete these three factors such that we could modulate these very high up important proteins that have already previously been shown to increase the health and lifespan of mice. FGF21, alpha clotho have both shown increases in lifespan and health span up to 30% in mice. And TGF beta 1 showed about a 10% increase in health and lifespan um, in heterozygous mice. And so we thought to re regulate these three important key proteins would start to shift the paradigm of what is possible in the aging space. These three things are going to reverse the state 
of these three proteins, which will show the proof of concept that we can re-regulate not just three, but thousands, if not tens of thousands of genes all simultaneously in the future with our next generation therapy. So these first generation therapies should be able to treat numerous different age-related diseases with a single combination therapy. And then the next step would be to take it one step further to more powerful epigenetic uh, mo modifications. Right, interesting. And I would like to get to the future and kind of what, what the next steps are uh, a bit later. Um, essentially, you're going to modify the, so everything's in the liver, is it? Uh, or is there some in the kidneys? These first three factors are aimed at being delivered to the liver via AAV8, mm -hmm. which primarily targets the liver. Uh, we further target specifically to the liver using liver specific promoters um, to make it so that it is only expressing in the liver. And they then express these three genes and systemically they get secreted and go everywhere in your body. Okay, so can we talk a little bit about the delivery method? So you talked about the AAV, uh, adeno-associated virus. So can sure. you talk yeah, can you talk a little bit about um, how that works and how you're targeting it specifically to the liver? Yeah, AAV is a small non-enveloped uh, non-pathogenic virus that was found um, coming uh, when they purified it, it came purified with uh, adenovirus at the same time. That's why it's adeno-associated virus, AAV. And we, um, I mean, humanity have repurposed it as a tool uh, to use in gene therapy. We took out the genes that gave instructions to make more AAV, and we put in our own genes that we want to be used as therapeutics. And uh, AAV has natural propensities to go into different tissues and organs. Uh, AAV8 was found in Jim Collins's lab uh, uh, at UPenn, and it had a better infectivity to get into liver tissue specifically. And so we're piggybacking on its natural ability to infect liver cells really well and delivering our genes to the liver to create a protein factory inside the body. So do you put all three genes into a single AAV or you have three? Oh, well, actually you're using two, right? You've got them two and two. Yeah, we're just using two for our first therapeutic, FGF21 and uh, TGF beta receptor two. Right. So you put both of those in the same AAV or you have two separate envelopes or? Uh, we have one vector now. You have one vector, okay.